My name is Juliette Bainos Sutherland. I'm the director of the Pan Caribbean Partnership on HIV and AIDS, based at the CARICOM Secretariat. I'm sitting here at the University of Guyana with four wonderful students and one, three wonderful students and one alumni of the communications program at the University of Guyana. I thank the authorities here at the university, Dr. Paloma Mohammed, for allowing us this opportunity to bring a program really focused on International Women's Day. The theme of this year's celebration was Connecting Girls, Inspiring Future. So given the very interesting and important theme, we thought it was important to perhaps sit with some young women, find out more about their reality, and really do essentially what the theme was calling us to do, connect with girls and inspire their futures. I'm sitting with Espreen, Suelle, Jasmine, and... Tivia, I think it is important to recognize that life really is about choices. And I'm going to shoot to um, Esperin first, um, really on the issue of really finding your purpose. Well, first of all, I would like to say in terms of your purpose, for many persons, they do not know what their purpose is. And for you to find your purpose, you really need to do self-introspection, uh, understand your strengths, your weaknesses and build on those strengths. Many persons, when they aren't uh, guided by a purpose, their lives are confused. They really don't know what direction to go and what to do with themselves. And for me, I believe my purpose is to actually guide young persons um, in whatever areas they would like to um, be in, in terms of strengthening some of their areas. For example, many women, many teenagers, they do not understand themselves when they're teens and you find that they um, are very misguided at that age because many of them may not have parental guidance in their lives and they are usually disturbed at this point in the time. So I would like to actually use um, the arts, drama, uh, drama and uh, theater to actually encourage young persons in this area, build them up in different areas so that they can be better persons. And how did you, did, was it easy coming to that purpose? Um, since I was of the age of 13 um, in secondary school, one of my teachers, she encouraged me to um, join drama and poetry. And at that time I was very shy and I was very reserved also. But it was very easy for me because I knew that I always loved and I had a passion for drama and the arts. So I tried a little in terms of the competition competitions that we usually have in schools. So I tried to um, audition for those and the school, uh, folks from the school really loved my performances and from there I continued in terms yes. of um, doing poetry and drama for a speech day and it was very, very much interesting and I continued that from that day on. Okay, so it's almost like the feedback you got from people yes. as you evolved as a person really helped you to be certain about that you were on the right path in terms of finding your purpose. Yes. Um, for you, um, Suelle. I believe experiences and life really has brought me to understand what my purpose is. I believe that every girl needs a friend. Um, and we were talking about about life and how life would treat with us differently and we will have things that we really want to but because of situations we become discouraged or some of us will give up. Um, I think more and more as our society evolves or as the world evolves actually, girls really need to understand and feel that they're, they're still special, that they can still do what they need to do. It might take some years, um, longer than they had anticipated, but they can still do it. Um, even if they can't do what they really, really want to do, then they, there, there must be something else that you love to do. Um, perhaps a plan B, um, but keep going. And I love to encourage girls, um, and from time to time young men, to, to keep going. Just don't, it makes no sense to stop. You know, what are you going to stop? What's going to happen? Um, are you are you willing and able to to um, deal with what comes next and, and everything in life, everything that you do, you never know, might eventually get you to the point of where you actually would like to be or want it to be all along. Um, we have with us um, someone who is a, an, a 
attorney at law, Jasmine. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I'm an expert at segues. <laughs> I'm an expert at segues. Um, so that's where I was going with that. Um, ready to lead in and have you, in terms of finding your purpose, I'm aware that you're a final year um, here at the University of Guyana um, in law. Um, has Did that decision to do law come out of a very clear sense of purpose and where tell tell us how you got here i pulled it out of the ten air and just pulled it you know but um i really really didn't know what i wanted to do when i was i wanted to be a fashion designer you know you know nice pretty clothes you dress nice and everything that's what i wanted to do then i thought realistically about the whole idea and then I looked at people running here and there with the whole fashion industry. It's kind of hard. So I said, okay. One day this lady came to our church and um, she was telling us about... Um, she, she, she had some word for me and she spoke it to me and it was kind of something prophetic. So um, in the line, I was now changing my mind to say, Mom, I'm going to go and I'm probably going to do law or something or politics or something to that extent. So I was either, it was between, I signed up for two things, law and politics. And, um, well, I was just out to um, CXE, so I went to sociology. And then I liked sociology, then I wanted to do psychology. So it was like a whole lot of things, but Lovely. all of them were yeah. in the same vein kind Social of Social sciences, yeah. Exactly. So I said, all right, then after I finished sociology, I didn't do the entire year, I just did one year and then I went over into law. And since then, um, I, I'm still not clear on the, I'm not too sure about the standing up in court and saying objection and the like or anything like that, but it's still going on with the process. I, I don't want to do Trinidad, but I applied to Trinidad just in case. Um, and I want to apply to these um, different um, universities in the States. So most likely if I'm practicing, it's over there. It's like I just want to leave. I, I'm not going away from my heritage or or, or get, being Guyanese born or anything like that. I'll always come back and give back and stuff like that. But how I'm going right now, Mm -hmm. Okay, but that, that, I think that that's the point. But underlying that, um, um, would you say there's an underlying purpose or you're working through that? I'm, I think I'm more likely going with, um, because I got the prophetic word when I was like 14 or 15. No, no, no. It wasn't so young. It was like 16 when I was now finishing CXE. Yeah. And this lady told me something and it's like when she told me it like hit home and it kind of brought everything into being because it's like you had all these pieces all over the place and trying to fit them all together but then like when she actually told me what she said it's like it actually all brought it there's some missing pieces in between yeah but it's like you could see the form of the puzzle now you know the, the four corners and everything you know but it's just like putting the little pieces in the middle or something like that but I think there's purpose in everything that you do take until you really decide what exactly you want to do. And there are lessons that perhaps um, in, in a wider sense, a um, more spiritual sense, there are, there are lessons that you need to, to learn. There are things that you can do um, until you, you get to that point. And not saying no to the journey or choosing what parts of the journey you would like to have. Everybody has 24 hours in a day. So it's like the rich man can't buy more time, the scientist can't invent more time. Mm -hmm. And so it's like everybody is given opportunity. You just have to take it and, and run with it instead of just, oh, putting off for, tom for tomorrow, putting off today what you could do tomorrow. But you know, some people would say, why do today what you can do tomorrow? Mm -hmm. So it's all about a mindset that mm -hmm. you personally have. Jasmine spoke a lot about her faith. Has your faith, um, helped you um, really find and be so certain and clear about your purpose in the way that she's spoken about it? Well, I tend to look at it less as a faith and more as a spiritual walk. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of finding myself and finding purpose within life, um, I, have, I have embraced Christ and embraced God, um, more importantly, over religion. Um, and I have walked, you know, in, with my life, um, I have stayed close to him and I have used him as a guide in terms of where I would find my path. But I do not think I'm anywhere close um, to finding my path in life. I do several things across the board. 
I direct, I write, I, um, I'm interested in human rights, so I do a lot of um, uh, voluntary human rights work. I uh, stage manage and do production management, and I have a degree in international relations, and I currently work at UNICEF. Wow. So you have I have I have <laughs> I have all these hats that I'm wearing. So I'm currently I have no idea. I'm thinking currently in my life, okay, what are you gonna do now? Mm -hmm. You need to to do something because I'm the type of person that cannot just sit still for too long. And currently in my life I'm feeling as if I'm sitting still. Yeah. Wow. I, I yeah. Even though you're doing all of Even though I'm doing all of these things, I just feel as if something is missing. Something that I'm looking for isn't there. So I'm like currently okay, I I need to find something else to do right now. <laughs> as much as you know, persons look at me and they say, Oh my gosh, you're so accomplished at such a young age mm -hmm. and I'm like, really? No. I'm, I'm nowhere near where I want to be in my life and I'm, I'm trying to find ways uh, to get there faster. I have no idea where I'm going but I know that I'm getting there and um, this, with the work that I do, um, the people I interact with, um, but in terms of a definitive purpose so to speak, um, I cannot define it as yet mm -hmm. and you know it's something I know some persons would believe in life, okay, if, if, you, if you cannot define your purpose, then you can't walk mm -hmm. in your purpose. But it's something I've realized is sometimes when we just stop and we look around us and we see where we are, we can find fulfillment and we can find happiness. And some, you know, some young women especially, you know, they're going and they're looking and they're searching and they're like, okay, they're not doing anything with their life because they feel where they are currently is not where they need to be or they feel where they are isn't um, where God wants them to be but sometimes at the end of the day if we just pause and, and I, I love the, the the thought and the theory of pausing your life mm -hmm. because sometimes things are really fast paced. Mm -hmm. You need to just stop, you know, breathe and look at your life and look at yourself and be thankful for where you are mm -hmm. and that in itself is the purpose you're fulfilling. I really appreciated the diversity of the responses and I know that each people listening can really relate to all of the things that you've said. Um, for for, for in, in the way that you, you've spoken, has has your approach or the situation you found yourself um, in influence the choices that you've made in terms of of relationships, in terms of um, your sexual expression? Well, I'm not sure that aspect has influenced my choices. What I would say has um, actually influenced my choices is the family I grew up in. Um, I grew up in a family where I was very protected and sheltered, even though I had my little side to me. Yeah? So, um, <laughs> <laughs> But I guess we all go through that yes, phase in life. Even if we're a little sheltered, there are some areas where we we um, are not trouble. so yes, give trouble in some areas. But I, um, even though I was a little um, on the other side, not too much. But um, I always kept in my mind that you know what well, my parents always told me, you know, no sex before marriage and all of that. And they also advised me. They really weren't. Um, in, I read a lot and I actually observed what was going on in society and I observed that many young folks, for example in my school when I was growing up, many young folks usually hop from one relationship to the other and because of my shy and reserved nature, I really did not want to be one of those individuals. So I always kept to myself and I said to myself, I'm going to wait in the right time when the right guy approaches me and then I'm going to give him the opportunity if, you know, what the characteristics to match up with my standards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in terms of that, I think my parental guidance and I was always want to observe and try to look within myself to see what exactly I want as a young woman from a gentleman or a partner, and I use that as a guidance for my decisions in terms of relationships and and so forth. And where are you now, Esprit? In terms of relationships? <laughs> yes, thank you, TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Boston. Boston. Go ahead, go ahead. I don't want to do that. I usually do this. Anyway, yeah, so I have a 
I'm currently engaged, and yes, oh. I'm about to be married. And thank you very much, Tivia. You're for, welcome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm invited. I don't want to crush you. That's great. Yes. So well, I remember in school, you know, growing into your body. You know, you know, growing into your body, you know, you um, and then feeling, feeling attractive, feeling, you know, all the boys are looking now, and so on and so on. I found myself from time to time not telling my dad everything. I'm very close to my dad, but I would, um, you know, give him hints and and so on. But one thing he said to me that really, it really stuck with me throughout the years, and it really saved me, or in a sense, protected me from myself and from, from really bad situations. If you do, he said to me, if you do not like the guy, do not lead him on. And that really stuck with me. So I was able, from just, just those few words, um, was able to really make good decisions. Um, I like boys, but I, I really, I can't say that I was, um, I really respected their feelings. So I did not move from relationship to relationship. And I knew when I meet someone uh, that I will know exactly that he is the one. Um, he's the one for me. And I would usually tell you know, girls, you know, pray about this man you want. Write, you know, there's nothing wrong with writing down what, exactly what, 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 what you want it to look like. Um, you only have <laughs> You know? And I, I, I honestly did that. Yes. I, I did that uh, in February of Can 2001. Yeah. Oh, I wish I, I didn't bring it. Oh, but really? I have it in my prayer journal. And I, yes. I really, I really took it seriously. In 2001, I prayed about this man I want to get married to. And where you know? I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, it's, it's it's it's. I met the man. I married the man. And you know, it's it's about you know. Food, food, <laughs> relationship is really about knowing what you want and being upfront and honest about your standards yeah. um, because we have expectations of people we all have standards but we don't necessarily communicate those standards yeah. um, what about the young woman out there who is who's not not able to be as as clear mm. um, maybe she finds herself you push into a congregation yes for different reasons yeah for different reasons um you know they're not as clear it could just be that they're trying to they're trying to work through those yes. things as i talked about my own my, journey of finding my husband my mother used to be on her dying knees like Lord help this child, help this, boy, this child. But in my entire lifetime, I've only had two boyfriends, and um, mom, mom always used to be like, Jasmine, Jasmine, decide now. I'm like, I'm 21. It's like, well, at that time, I was like, Mom, I'm, I'm 18. I'm supposed to be able to be like free, and you know, there's, there's all. I don't know if you all went through it, but. I'm gonna stick here by myself because um there was this time when you always used to go through the, oh you like him oh, I like him too oh and he's, he's cute and he's <laughs> nice and oh my gosh so I am always attracted to heights like Andy mm -hmm. is height I'll be like woof. Oh, he's tall and nice, right? So this is like the first thing I used to see, and then it's like then you get to know them, and then you, the personality stink. So you move, you move. There's not like a relationship. You're just yeah. talking, talking, yes, talking, yes, yes, and then you move on to the next one, and then oh, he's nice, he's tall. And then it's like oh, oh, so there he has a uh, something, something you come up with. There are some women out there who are don't have the privilege that all of us have, clearly from speaking to you have. Um, it's not easy for them to make choices. True. They're in a situation where they're, um, I know you're interested in human rights, where they're in abusive um, homes, or where, where from the time they were children, they were um, exposed to child abuse, um, either physical or emotional. And it, it is it's difficult for them to perhaps relate to the way that we're speaking so obviously wonderfully and different about about our experiences. You know, I know you, you are clearly a community activist and clearly grounded in, in the work that you're doing and what, what have been your observation about, um, you know, meeting, maybe working with, with, with women who are struggling? 
Well, um, well, also speaking from a personal perspective, who, um, from a person who didn't have the, the best relationship with her father, mm -hmm. and being um, exposed within the, um, within the community to women who would have been in abusive relationships, who would have been abused by cousins, by brothers, by fathers, stepfathers, that kind of thing. Um, it isn't the easiest thing um, to, to say to women or to show women that have experienced abuse in some form or the other, how it is they should relate or how it is they can use their purpose to find a relationship. Um, some of them prefer to just shut down in a corner and not be in a relationship at all. Others um, would prefer al alternative means and others would uh, go into other abusive relationships just because that is what they're mm -hmm. accustomed to. Yes. And it is an extremely, and this is affecting especially our society within Guyana. Mm -hmm. and. Um, in terms of what we say to them, I personally, um, from experience, I the best thing that you can actually do for a woman like that is to show support, mm -hmm. and you 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 don't force them. Um, they have they have very strict and very um, clear um, labels in their head for men, especially too. So they say, oh, things cliche things like all men are dogs, or mm -hmm. you know they're only good for one thing, or that kind of thing. You know, to take care of they they the, to bring the money in the home, to to have sex with them, and that's it. But uh, my my best advice is to just slow down. As I said earlier, I mean mm -hmm. this is this is a principle in life that I don't think many women fully understand. Mm -hmm. um, before you can be in a relationship with someone, you have to know yourself, mm -hmm. and to find yourself is a lifelong process. Mm -hmm. It's a lifelong journey, mm -hmm. and not many persons are privileged to to meet their complementing um, other half. Not many are, mm -hmm. and not many will. And this is the situation with women in abusive. Um, in abusive situations so it is just a matter of finding yourself being true to who you think you are mm -hmm. and loving yourself first yes and sometimes the way you can find out who you are to love yourself is through christ and through god and that is something i push i could sympathize but i can't empathize with it so it's like you're in an abusive relationship and you complain about it, you say, help me, get me out, um, I don't want to do this no more. And then, a couple days after, it's like, oh, I love him, I need him. I can, I could never understand it. And it's like, I, 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 I feel so, I, it's like, it just reels up in me when I see, like, they just sticking with it. And I could never understand why they stick with it. One, because of the soul tie. When you are with a partner, you know, you connect with that person and it's very difficult to lose that bond with that person. So you may not understand it and there are various other reasons why that person may return to that partner. Financial needs, you know, economic needs. Well, financial and economic, they're the same, so right? So if I help you with financial, what if it's like, say, okay, you could stay with me. You can, you could stay with me as long as you want. And you then let and then I come home. You pack your bags and you go straight back. I think there's certain, and I think it's something that, especially for women that haven't experienced any form of abuse in their life, persons that come from a um, a nuclear family or they had loving parents, the loving class, brother, background. you know, normal middle class. You you would have been provided for on a on a, a fairly middle class social economic level. Um, it's it is it can be very difficult for you to try to understand understand what it is that person would have experienced and the thing is the emotional tensions and the emotional ties that exist within a human being are all different mm -hmm. and so with that you would find the person because I've actually had a conversation with a woman that I have known that she's finally divorcing um, the guy finally I hope this um, I hope this lasts but um, she she has been back and forth with him for a period of about 20 years and um, her basic reason and this is the best way she has been able she's from a low class um, family the best way she has been able to explain this to me was um, she doesn't understand what her heart is saying to her but when she looks at him even though he, she knows he beats her and and he sometimes he would starve the family she loves him and I I couldn't quite comprehend that but because women but it's just, it's just emotional. emotional. Yeah. Exactly. It, it is the greatest part of us. I, 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 I say that the fact that you're asking the question 
means that you deserve to understand. I'm, I'm trying to understand. Yeah. So I think that's, that's that's part of it. I, I took to have, a, a, in, in the context of Barbados, it took me a little while listening to women and trying to understand the stories. I myself, I struggled when I was, was, was in my 20s. How do you have um, children from several different men? And then one day I had the opportunity to develop a good friendship with a woman, she had five children from three different men. And she explained to me, and I, I think she says this, I always have so much hope mm -hmm. that this Did relationship is going to be the relationship mm -hmm. and that he will look after me and my other yeah, children. Okay. So some of these women that still have hope that this person that they're meeting, and then some women, then she also said, there is a pragmatism. Well, she didn't use those words. That's my stupid big word. <laughs> but she said, um, part of it is that you're thinking that when one isn't available to support um, the children, then this other one will come and provide. So she always had the situation where she was looking to, to the various men in her life basically to provide for her financially and economically. And it impacted on the, the relationship she had, the kind of, um, of sexual intercourse she had, clearly. Um, she had different partners. But underneath this, in my discussions with her and developing a friendship with her, is was a woman that was so full of hope that this relationship, this man is going to be the good man. This man is going to make um, the difference in our and stemming off And stemming off from what you're saying, most of the time um, when you see situations like that existing, it comes from a, 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 a deeper hurt. place and a deeper hurt within um, from some father that wasn't there all the time or someone that just didn't fulfill their duty and their role that they were supposed to. And so there's this void in, in, in these women's lives that they're trying very hard to just fill and they're going to look and they're going to find any means necessary um, to fill it. And they're probably saying that us on our head, Lieutenant Chair's quote on Exactly. Yeah. We'll so exactly. Understand. We, we don't understand. understand. Yes. We, we, we don't understand. And like TV says, that there's a hole. They have a hole. And, and because we are such emotional beings and we want to connect and we want love and attention. And so I know abuse men who abuse women are some of the most, they're like drug addicts. They're, they're very um, manipulative. They're very skillful at um, oppressing women and having them think, no, you can't, no one else could love you the way I do, and, and, and they beat them up and then they give them a glimpse of hope and they love them and that, that's, the, that's what, whatever they're giving them to cushion the, the licks um, is really what the, the desire that the woman has. It could be love, it could be you know, food, it, just some form of attention or affirmation or, or whatever it is. So they give them that, just a little bit, and then they beat them the next day. But, you know, but we all you know, yeah, make sacrifices and, and sometimes yeah, there, it's, hard, it's, it's hard, um, it's hard for, some, some, for some women to get out of it, but like TV says, we still have to support them, let them know yeah, you're precious, yeah. you can do it. Yeah. And as well, it's not too late for your, ch your, 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 your little girls, your children. Yeah. You might be in a, a rough relationship, you might not be able to get out of it, but you can teach your girls, you know what, you don't have to settle for this. Teach them about their standards, um, um, let them know that you can move on and you're, you're smart and, and you know, telling them all of these. In terms of women who are being abused, and you spoke about children, teaching your children, fathers are important, not only fathers, because sure. we all know not everyone has a father, a big brother that you may have, or, or some cousin who is also a male. He can also you know, advise you from a tender age, that's what's important in our society. Women and children and girls who are growing up now lack that fatherly figure. True. And they would like to have someone in who they look up to to actually advise them, tell them, you know what, this is the characteristics of a good guy. This is the character these are the characteristics of a bad guy. And from that standard that they receive, they can now be able to make better decisions when they get older. So that's what we need, male figures in our society, encouraging young women, going into schools, telling them, you know what, these are the standards. And even the, the music that we listen to, we listen the music is very derogatory in terms of the words that we hear about women mm -hmm. and many many women listen to this and you know what they think that this and is the standard and they accept this mm 
this is who we are and they even behave like that and we need better figures in our society to actually you know what change that perspective of women and help women to understand that they are worthy of being loved people think that when you're talking about women's issues you can necessarily um, isolate the discussion and then focus on women and you naturally as a discussion progress talked about the important role that men play for us at PanCat why we think um, programs of this nature are important is that discussions about HIV really essentially are discussions about sexuality discussions about relationship so what we do at the policy level what we do at the level of CARICOM and at country national programs care and treatment all begins with a relationship that takes place between a man and a woman mm -hmm. and that either in circumstances where there was no protection for all the reasons that we talked about there being no protection um, because women don't feel like they can say a wife it's very difficult for wives I cannot imagine telling my husband to use a condom. He, he would he would start wondering, well, what exactly are you doing in Guyana? You know, they're, they're, you know, relationships are such that you have to deal with the reality that using condoms, using protection for married women, um, is not is not um, an easy it's not an easy choice. So I'm thinking that it's very important that fun organization like PanCap for the work we do in national programs, really to be very grounded in understanding how young women like you face the reality, how you cope with the situation and circumstances that you find yourself in, and being recognizing that there are also women out there who aren't able to be as articulate as we are, and you've done such a wonderful job at representing some of the issues. Um, where would you each like to see yourselves a year from now? I'd like to see myself pursuing my LLM because I want to go and do that. That's a master's in law? Yes, a master's. I haven't decided the area of law. It would either be public or I like intellectual property. Intellectual property is a really nice subject. Uh, fully within my um, LLM program of international law. I'm hoping that I get through to go. So um, I'm so I will be completing that next year, March. Um, also, I'd like to see myself uh, continuing uh, along a very spiritual path because I think that is very important for me in this stage of my life. Mm -hmm. um, no engaged or nothing. <laughs> very clear. <laughs> Don't judge. Very. You I am never very know. Very <laughs> no, I'm yeah, very. Yeah. She <laughs> doubts it. She's very <laughs> bad. Just, just continuing a very spiritual path, um, finding myself, which is something I, I wish to continue to do. And of course, um, writing, because I am compiling a book of poetry. So I'm hoping within two to three years, I'll be able to publish that. So just adding to that and adding to the world. I would like to continue in the arts, theater and drama. So I would like to at least carry a uh, dramatic pieces into schools and help young folks, you know, educate them in certain aspects, for example, abuse and how to love themselves and how to take care of themselves as teenagers. So yeah. I would like to do that by next year, 2013. I would perhaps like to start my master's degree in media psychology and look forward to and start planning for a PhD. No, I'm very hopeful that Dr. Muhammad will allow us perhaps to come back. And you seem like women who would be willing to share, you know, your journey over over the next year. So your stories and your experiences really have been helpful to us celebrating um, International Women's Day um, 2012 under the theme of connecting girls, inspiring our futures. Thank you.